Hello, my name is Paul Zirev. I'm from the um, Galaxy group in Freiburg and I will walk you through this tutorial for metatranscriptomics analysis. If you watch this tutorial, please be sure that you have had the introduction about Galaxy, which you can find uh, in this link. Um, apart from that, um, that should be the only requirement. So this will, tutorial will go through um, how to analyze metatranscriptomic data, um, what information can be extracted from this data, and how to assign taxa and function information to identified sequences. So why do we want to study the microbiome? Well, I mean, one of the outstanding informations there is, for example, that apart from the genes that a human has, there's also a rich, um, one could say, second genome, which comprises all the bacteria, fungi, and archaea, which are part of the human body as well, which is 10 times more cells than yourself, actually. So there's a huge um, information here, which has effects about your um, health and uh, such. Another good reason is that uh, the microbiomes have a huge impact on nature as well, um, which can be investigated using those technologies. Um, the microbiome analysis um, does not only concentrate on metagenomics, but also on metatranscriptomics, which is what we focus here now, but it also comprises metaproteomics, and in some regard also meta, um, um, meta, other meta studies as well. This tutorial is based to the main part on the ASAM workflow, which is described here, which has a large part of pre-processing, which is always an important step for any um, read-based analysis pipeline. Then it removes some of the um, RNA, which is uh, not needed to, um, which is not uh, used to create context or um, which does not encode um, proteins. And then makes uh, use of the two tools, human and metaflan, which are difficult to use um, on your own machine but simple to use uh, with the Galaxy um, Workflow Manager system. Before we start, maybe a short look on where our data comes from. So this uh, is read data, whole genome um, read data from biogas degradation, where they want to analyze how the microbiome changes over time um, by digesting cellulose. Um, to make this series short, we only took one data point from the series, um, but the overall data analysis can be extended in theory to large data series and data later, later sets as well, um, but this would take more time. It cannot be done easily in such a short um, tutorial. So in order to start this tutorial, please make sure that you have logged in into usegalaxy.eu this tutorial does not run on um, usegalaxy.org, unfortunately, yet. Um, if you have logged in, it's, uh, there's a very nice feature of Galaxy that you can actually do the tutorial inside the Galaxy itself, and you don't have to open another window. So you can uh, click here on the see Galaxy training materials, and then you will see uh, you can search for the tutorial. In this case, that's the meta uh, transcriptomics tutorial as written here. And then you can follow the steps one by one while having this uh, over or while having this guide at the same time visual. Um, so, like I said, we want to do this metatranscriptomic tutorial, um, which follows the ASAM workflow. So you can already scroll down on here. So the first step we need to start here is with the pre-processing steps. And before we start with anything, of course, we need to upload data and create a new history. Um, unfortunately, this view here is a little bit wrongly rendered. I hope this will be better next week. Um, but um, you can all still read the text even though the diffs are not perfectly rendered as well. So there are two data sets from Synodo which we need for this um, tutorial, which are the raw reads um, from the bio um, experiment. In order to download those, you can um, 
copy the link here, for example, stdg or just copy them like this, and then go back to your Galaxy instance. You see here that I have already created a history where all the steps are run through. That's because some of those steps can take longer and I cannot wait um, while I do this tutorial. But um, so you can follow this tutorial step by step and wait until th those are done. In my case, they will already be ready. So what you need to do before we start is, like I said, create a new history. Therefore, you need to click on this, um, on this button, create a new history. I make it here as an example and name it accordingly. In this case, we can call it Meta Trans, for example, and save that one. And then we need to upload the data. To upload data, please um, type in get uh, upload data here. You can click on this button and then the window should open. In this window, you can uh, now say choose remote file or pa uh, paste fetch data. And there you have to paste the links we just copied before. If you paste those links here and start, then the upload will start and this data will be loaded into your new history. You can close that window and you will see that in your history, Metatrans, this data will now appear. I will switch back now to my history where all this is already happening. In your case, it might take a little while before the data is completely loaded. Once the data is completely loaded, you can see here that um, the data is uploaded. You can investigate it having a look on the fast queue data. So those are raw reads um, from the metatranscriptomic experiment. So what is the next step in our experiment? We have investigated the files. They're completely uploaded. Let's look at the trainings material. We might want to rec rename the um, files so we can better remember them. Um, in this case, for example, just call them TA1 forward and reverse. Those are for the forward and reverse reads. We can rename the files by clicking here on the edit attributes and then you can just rename it, for example, like that. Remove that part, save this one here and you can do the same here. For your files, you have to make sure that the um, file type is correctly. Therefore, you can check the file type that is uh, that this is a uh, fast sanger fast sanger is the correct file type so we don't need to change anything if for some reason that's not fast sanger you would need to convert it to the correct file type you can choose any file type here that's just so that galaxy knows for example which tools can use which files and will help you thereby okay so what's the next step after we uploaded the data and as always we will look here um, at the tutorial in between so the first step, like I already said, is the pre-processing. But before we start with that, you should be aware that this tutorial is um, composed of two um, major options, basically. You can run a short tutorial with, or you can run a, a, run a long tutorial. I will go through the long tutorial. In the long tutorial, we will call each of the tools. We need to um, run this workflow and uh, then uh, look at the outputs and see what, what is happening. But this can take quite some time because there are multiple tools and we will go uh, through each of them step by step. What you can also do is um, switch to the short tutorial by clicking on this button, which you can uh, do at different steps of this tutorial. And then well, you can run a predefined um, workflow, which comprises already some of the tools and just run the workflows. So that workflow will run all the tools behind each other and makes the processing faster. It depends completely upon you if you want to like look in depth into some of the tools or if you just want to have a look on the overall workflow itself. But be sure that you click those button to switch between the tutorials. Like I said, I will go through the um, long tutorial. But I have to find the button back. So let's have another look what exactly are we trying to do in this tutorial. Um, like I said, we have metatranscriptomic data, which are reads um, of R and R from our experiment. Then we want to do pre-processing, means that we want to remove uh, reads which have uh, low quality, which are duplicated, and um, we also need to um, remove adapters and um, chimeras 
and things that we don't want to have in our data itself. Then we want to remove all the RNR which does not encode proteins because that is not something we can actually use um, for our um, functional analysis because functional analysis is based on the protein encoding information. But we want to use um, our data as well for taxonomic quantification and therefore we also need the RNR and we, we will see how we split it up later. Then we use the two tools Metafilan2 and Human um, to do um, two of the major things which are um, very important for metatranscriptomic data analysis, taxonomic quantification, meaning we want to say for um, we want to say what is the abundance of um, taxas in our sample, so what bacteria and what archaea and what species um, and genus uh, exist in our um, samples. And um, for functional annotation, we want to say um, what are the what are the genes existing in our um, sample over all of the um, um, species? What are the pa pathways? So that's uh, that's like a set of uh, of genes which or set of proteins which together um, formulate a function. Or we can also go to, into uh, gene families and gene ontology terms to further group those genes um, to derive information. And Lately, we also can combine taxonomic information and metabolic information to become um, taxonomic function quantification, meaning that we can see what are the functions based on specific taxa and not on the overall sample. Additionally, we also use some visualization tools, especially Graphland and Krona, which makes the taxonomic information especially um, quite visually uh, appealing, which is also important, for example, if we want to make papers or similar. So. Let's start with the quality control steps. We will do three quality control steps to start with. That's using FastQC, which is a tool which creates a rep report um, of your reads, and that's you observe the quality. MultiQC, which can combine multiple um, bioinformatic outputs, for example, the outputs of FastQC into one overall report, which is necessary since we have um, multiple um, read files, the forward and reverse reads. And we use CutAdapt, which is a tool for trimming and filtering, which removes the reads uh, with low quality from our data. So let's dive into fast uh, uh, QC. Um, so we need to open the fast QC tool, which you can find on this site if you open it, and call it with the um, call it with the um, information that was given in our tutorial. So what we can see, okay, we want to use data from our history. So we collect here multiple files and we collect the data from our history, which is the forward and the reverse ones. You can um, collect multiple files if you use the STRG button and um, collect multiple of those. So now we have collected multiple files. What else do we need to do? Nothing, we're not using any fancy parameters here. So what we can do now is um, just run the tool by clicking on this button and the tool will run. I'm not clicking it because I already did it, but in your case you can click it and then um, the tool should uh, show up in the window. So what happens after the output? Um, and please stop the video and wait a little bit um, until your tool is um, finished, so we can compare our outputs. So what we get for this um, tool is a nice um, web page, which shows us the quality of our reads. We get here, for example, a, a base uh, a quality for each of the positions in our read, and we can see the overall quality is good, um, shown in the red area, a uh, green area here. So overall, everything, uh, all the reads are over. Um, 28. Um, we get also per sequence uh, quality score, um, per base sequence content, which we, where we see, okay, we more or less have the same amount of uh, um, uh, normal distribution of our bases in our samples. We have the GC content and uh, different uh, metrics, which we can analyze. Um, we have some overrepresented uh, sequences as well, adapter content and such. 
So QC is a very fast QC is a very nice tool to have uh, uh, the quality control over your samples. You can have a look at um, the, the forward reads. You can just also have a look at the reverse reads. Keep in mind that you can always see um, how the outputs of the tool are related to the last tool because um, the numbers are shown here. So for example, this is FastQC done on data two. So that's the FastQC analysis of the forward data. And we can also have a look at the uh, um, data one, which is FastQC analysis of our reverse data. Um, the next step after FastQC would be to use MultiQC to combine our outputs together to have an overall view of our data. So once again, type in the tool you're looking for, MultiQC. And then you can see, you can type, uh, select multiple files here. We select our FastQC files, um, web page and web page. And that should be it. And we can, uh, ah, we actually need to use the raw data. So we, we use the raw data for that and create a report. Once again, you have to click run tool. In my case, that was already done. And if you look at the multi QC output, you can see now it, that you have a nice um, aggregated view over all your data. You can see um, the number of reads in fo both forward and reverse. Um, you see they have the same number, which is normal because one sequence correlates to the other one in uh, forward and reverse reads. You can see the quality of both types is good and you can uh, also see the other metrics for all the data. What would be the next step? First of all, we can try to answer some of those questions. I already said, told you how many uh, files you have. How is the quality score? Is there any bias in the uh, content? We, we saw that as well. So you can answer all those questions um, based on the multi-QC output. Now we want we have a slight idea about our data and we see okay our data is overall good, but we want to remove some of the sequences which are not good. Cutadap is one of multiple tools which can be used for this. There's a, actually a plethora of tools. Um, some of them are mentioned here and there are even more uh, like Cutadap, Trimomatic, Trim Galore, Clip, and all of those. And they are focused on different specific topics. In this case, we will use Cutadap. Cutadap can be used to uh, remove adapter sequences, which are which are left over from the um, from the um, library generation primers, poly a tails, and other unwanted sequences. So, in order to run Cutadapt, please um, open the tool and add those um, um, and add those um, parameters here. So, I will use open Cutadapt. So we have to open cut adapt and then we choose parrot end because we have um, parrot reads like i said we have forward and reverse read and we need to uh, use now the um, the forward and reverse data here um, and we need to add some filter options which uh, where we add one filter options is um, that we want to take care of the minimum length Filter options minimal length. Actually, you have to find it. Minimum length, um, which is 150s. That that's the read rent we're looking at. We want a quality cutoff. That can be found in read modification options, and then we can say quality cutoff. which we send to uh, 20 and we want the output option, we want the report, which gives, which gives us some information and also this report can be used with multi-QC. 
Um, if you want to learn more about um, quality cutoffs and such, please have a look at the specific tool informations. Let's run this tool as well. I click run. In this case, um, once again, you need to click run on your instance. There is the question, why do we use this tool um, on... Um, why do we run the, uh, the trimming tool only once on parent end data and not twice, once for each data set? And you know, like I said, in a parent uh, end data, the sequences, they correlate with each other. So the one sequence is actually the beginning of the read and the other is the, is the reverse of the read and they can overlap um, to a specific content. And if the quality um, of one of those reads or the combined reads is not good enough, we want to exclude both of the sequences. So that's an important step. Um, all right, so now we have run cut adapt and let's have a look at the cut adapt output uh, report. And we can see in this report that we processed 260,000 reads. Some of them were too short um, and some of them couldn't uh, pass through the trimming. So the total reads um, that still exist at the end of our trimming uh, um, uh, wait. you can actually look at, have a look at the output is this number and this uh, are those um, can be seen here. <coughs> So we also saw that for the we trimmed much more base pores for the uh, for the second read file, which you can see over here. And if we compare that with the information we have from FastQC, or rather from the from the MultiQC output, then we can see that the quality um, for the one um, read file was on the sides was less good than for the other ones. And that explains that we had to um, trim more base pairs here. Okay, what would be the next step after using cut adapt? Like I already said, we only want to take a look at the um, RNR sequences which do encode for proteins. There are other RNR sequences, um, for example, the ribosomal RNR sequence, which we don't um, want to have in our data set for functional uh, information but we actually want it for um, taxonomic information. So we use filter with sort me RMR um, in order to remove those um, sequences, which can be, uh, which are actually found um, in the silver or the air farm database. So those are sequences which are identified to encode for ribosomal um, uh, RNR. And this RNR is not um, useful for function information. So we want to use them for function information. And that's how we use the tool. So we can um, um, you can click on a filter with sort BMR. And what is a nice feature actually is that if you look at the tutorial in Galaxy, so if, if this is opened in Galaxy, you can actually sometimes click on the tool and the tool will directly open in uh, the Galaxy frame. So what we need to um, use here are the um, quality control forward and reverse reads. Um, so we once again look at paired reads and you need to make sure to use the quality control forward and reverse reads um, which is which are those two. So use a cut adapt output to run this tool and um, the option for the use is um, is uh, output both reads to a re rejected file. Um, that means if one of the reads is um, detected to be of a ribosomal sequence, we want to remove both of the um, both of the reads. We want to search through both strands, of course, yes. Um, and here we can choose the database. We will select all of them because we want to re remove all of the um, sequences which cannot be used for functional information. Um, we say include aligned uh, reads in fast fast queue format. Yes, 
Um, and that information should be alright. Once again, you have to say run the tool and then the tool will run and then you will see the output um, here. So if we if the sort MMR tool finished, we can have a look at the logs and we see here that we um, process a total of more than 400,000 uh, reads and of those uh, about uh, 120,000, um, more than 120,000 had the e-score higher than the one we needed to identify them as RNR. So about one quarter of our data are RNR and we can remove them, we don't need them for the function analysis. And if we look in the detail which, um, which um, database was mainly used to identify those RNRs, we see that the silver bacterial database um, had the highest amount of matches. So we can expect, expect from our data that uh, the main amount of sequences derived from bacterial species. Before we can continue with um, what happened now, something switched around. Before we can continue with um, uh, extraction of the community profile, we need to do one more pre-processing step. So the function annotation tool actually needs um, only one RNR file, uh, one uh, fastq file, but as you know we have paired files, so we have two files which uh, show corresponding reads. Um, the simplest way to, to pass only one file to the next data is to use the fastq interlacer, which basically takes all the sequences from our two files and puts them together in one data set where they are stacked over each other. So you can do this previously by clicking on the fastq interlacer and then taking the output of sort me RNR because we want to take the ones where the RNR was removed because the interlaced will be uh, used as input for our um, function annotation tool. So we have to take the line forward and the aligned uh, reverse reads here. And they can run this tool again and you will see that you get the interlaced file as output where um, now those sequences are combined uh, and stack it over each other. So the sequences which were previously in two different files are in one file now and now they can be used as input for um, the next uh, fun for the function annotation tool. So now our quality control stops are over and we can start to do the actual nice um, phylogenetic analysis. So we will start with trying to extract the community profile and there are different approaches. Um, we have also different tutorials about this on the Galaxy Trading Network, um, which you can gladly have a look at. Um, what is the most used approach to um, derive the community profile is usually based on um, assignment of 16S or 18S um, Amplicon data. But um, in this case, uh, if you have metagenomic um, uh, whole genome reads, then you miss out a lot of the data actually because only a few of them encode um, for those uh, Amplicon data uh, sequences. Um, but you can also make use of marker genes, which is a larger selection of genes that can be attributed to specific um, uh, sequences, for example with the tool Metaflan. So Metaflan has a database of 1 million unique class specific mark genes, not only the ARNR but also other ones, which are from a large database of reference bacterial, viral and eukaryotic genomes. And using those um, marker genes, Metaflan can uh, very nicely um, um, assign a large amount of the reads from her whole genome um, metagenomic data. So please um, click on Metaflan to run this tool. And we run the Metaflan tool. Here, this tool is one of the tools which has a lot of options. So make sure that you take all the correct um, inputs and um, values that it runs correctly. What we need as the input are the, is the output of the cut adapt uh, quality control. 
we don't use the interlace data because um, we actually want to have the um, RNR reads inside our data set for this uh, phylogenetic or for this um, taxonomic analysis because those um, um, because 16S and other um, amplicon sequences are very useful for taxonomic assignment. Um, so we take the output here of those uh, of the cut adapt output. We take the minimal length of 70. We use um, the locally attached database. That's the Metaflan um, cloud specific marker genes, which is a huge database, um, but available in Galaxy. Um, we use the options relative abundance here, and we want to have the taxonomic level for the relative abundance output for all taxonomic levels. Um, but it's also important to take care of that we create a quantile value for a robust average of 0.1, which is a quality control um, number. And one other output we also want to set is that we have an output for Krona. Krona is a visualization tool, which we have a look at later. So it's nice to have a few on our data, and therefore this option needs to be set. And if you made sure that you have all the values correct, please run the tool. And this can take a little while, take a coffee, and come back to the tutorial after. Once Metaflan has finished, you can have a look at the file predicted taxon relative abundance uh, by clicking on the view. And then you see um, that the output is a hierarchical um, view of all the taxas detected in the sample. So it starts, um, uh, goes from all the taxas over family and um, all the way down to species and strain. It also shows you the NCBI tax ID corresponding to the to the names it's shown here and the relative abundance which means um, additional um, percentage wise um, of the reads found for this text. So here for example 100% of um, the reads in the sample are from the bacterial kingdom and 69% or 68% are from the um, from the species uh, Firmicutus. And then it goes down and there's a split up where you can uh, investigate all the um, percentages uh, step by step. Obviously, if you don't have a, a more, um, more, um, if you have more, if you don't have a different um, strains or species then the number for the um, for the families for example or for the genus identity tend to the downward um, uh, species and strains which is for example the case here you have the same number of uh, species and um, uh, strains because the, actually all, of, all the uh, strains in this found for the species are of the same strain so the numbers are identical here there are also different outputs um, from Metaflan. For example, there's a collection which shows you the output for, for each taxa, for example, only for the class, which in this case is only Clostria and uh, Coprothermobacteria, for the species and for all the taxa actually as a, as a separate file. There is the output um, of uh, SAM, which is um, the sequence alignment to the to the query database, and there's also a biome file, which um, is uh, comparable to the pretty taxon file, but in the biome format, which is often the input for other downstream tools. Um, and there's also the formatted version for Krona, which allows us to have a, a nice visual view on it. When analyzing this data for taxonomic abundance, one needs to be careful because we're looking at metatranscriptomics data, not metagenomics data. In metagenomic data, each genome copy is assumed to donate one copy of each marker gene um, because it comes from the genome. But in transcriptomics, we don't know how man, many uh, genes are transcribed into the transcriptomic data set. So the reason why we have many of a marker gene can be because we have many of the species that produce it, or it can be that this species is um, producing more of those marker genes. Um, which is a different thing altogether. And, and the, one needs to be careful when interpreting RNA data here. They cannot be 100% correlated to the abundance of the species 
um, but it could also be true to differentially described um, genes. As a next step, there are some downstream tools which only need the lineage and the abundance from the metaphylon uh, output. Therefore, we need to cut those two columns um, from our dataset using um, the cut tool. Um, and we take the and we take the metaflan predicted taxon relative abundance as input, and we cut the columns uh, one and three. Run this tool, and we will use the output later. Now we want to have a nice visual view on our um, abundance table from metaflan. That's why we use the metaflan output for Krona as well. And we can use this input for the Krona pie chart. If you click on this one and take the metaflan predicted taxon relative abundance for Krona as input. Which you can find um, here. We take all of the, those options and then um, you can run that one and have a look on the output data. The output was created you can click on uh, the Krona pie chart and open the HML file and it will give you an interactive HML file where you can investigate um, your abundance of your sample. In this case, we see we have uh, two bacterial um, ACTV pro thermocellus and copro thermobacter and also those bacteria have um, uh, or this, the, the abundance of the bacteria is, is uh, comprised of uh, different strains. Um, you can zoom in to have a further look. In this case, when you zoom out, you only see the bacteria. If you zoom in, you see the strain as well. You can also click on uh, the samples to look at this. And this chart may not show you, may not um, excite you maybe so much, but uh, if you have other samples where you have a large amount of data, um, then it's very nice to have this visual visualization where you can have a hierarchical view on your data. Another way to visualize this data is to use GraphLAN. So you can use um, export to GraphLAN, and that's where we need the, um, the trimmed data basically, where we cut out the two columns only, because GraphLAN can only work with those uh, information. So please look, uh, click on uh, and make sure. Um, you use um, the given the, uh, the parameters given in the tutorial. So you, as input file, you need the cut file, um, not the complete file from the field, um, from the taxonomic output, and use those options. Um, you can list the levels and basically make sure that you um, follow the inputs here. And if you run this, you can have a look at the Caraflan output. And you will see once again you show you see that you have two different um, bacterial strains uh, available in our data. So in this case, Graphland shows you um, the data on the strain level. Also, this plot is not so impressive yet, but it can be very nice if you have a lot of species and strains available in your sample. And also, so this is not an interactive view, but a, like a PNG file, and that can be, for example, used for posters or putting them on your um, in your uh, in your papers, for example. So with the taxonomic abundance, we have now answered the question, who is um, present in our sample? The next important question um, about metagenomic data is, what are the microorganisms actually doing there? Or otherwise say, what is the function performed by those microorganisms, which can be for each microorganism present in the sample, but also for the community overall because they can share pathways and such. Therefore, we use the tool Human, uh, human which um, was derived from analysis of human um, microbiome data. So click on uh, this tool. And when the tool opens, make sure that you also use exactly the same parameters as shown in the tutorial. As input, we use the interlaced non-RNR reads because we don't need the um, ribosomal RNR uh, from our taxonomic profiling, as I already explained. We, for the functional analysis, we only need to um, have genes which also decode for proteins. And we can bypass um, the taxonomic profiling step 
because we can actually use the taxonomic profile from um, um, Metaflan, so we can uh, use this file as input here. Um, please also make sure that all the parameters are identical to the ones used in the tutorial, and then you can run this tool. Human is a very powerful tool, but it can take quite a long time to run, since it has uh, to compare your sequences with a large uh, database to, to find all the functional annotation. Um, if you're running low on time, you can also just um, import those two files, do it as at the beginning to import those two files into your history, and that is actually the output which is generated by human. Then you don't have to wait all the time to run the tool. If the human tool has finished, or if you have downloaded the data, you can look at the gene families and their abundance, and then you will see that we get all the gene families um, based on UNIREF 90, which is a classification of known genes, uh, of known proteins to a similarity of 90%, um, which are present in our data. And what we get are the um, reads per the reads per kilobase of um, uh, for those um, for those uh, protein classes um, for the complete uh, sample, but also for specific um, uh, bacterial um, taxonomies. Um, we also get the unmapped um, reads, so that is uh, hypothetical uh, reads that are mapped hypothetically um, to a unknown protein. Um, so that already gives us nice information about what uh, proteins are present in our um, sem uh, analyzed them. If you want to learn more about abundant um, proteins, you can, uh, for example, use the um, Use the rename features of human generated table. This tool would allow you to um, rename the UNIF IDs um, with names if you do that. Unfortunately, I already tried that, and for the most abundant family, you cannot map um, a correct name. However, you can have a look at the uh, UNIREF 90 and um, observe what is the um, most abundant protein family, and you see that this is a uh, uh, iron sulfur ferrodoxine domain, which is, um, I think, a very common domain in all domains of life. Um, and you can see that. Um, the output here is uh, um, like I already said, shows you um, the stratified and the unstratified table, meaning that the shows you the gene families um, for the overall sample, but also the gene families for um, stratified for specific uh, species. So if you want to split it up into two different files, you can use the split human table tool, which uh, basically splits the files based on the uh, line found in the data. So to use that, to split the tool, you have to use the stratify input table, of, uh, which is specific made for the human tool and apply that on the gene families and their abundance. And you will see that those tools run and once they're run you will get two different tools where you have an unstratified and a stratified table, the unstratified for all the samples and the stratified table for a specific um, species. Once this tool is um, done you can see that the unstratified data shows us the protein families for each um, uh, in the overall, uh, like for all the species um, in the sample and the stratified table shows us the same information based for each specific strain. So you can for example see how many of the reads uh, were attributed to unclassified um, species of using uh, of this um, protein uh, family, which is usually a small amount and also the ones uh, for specific bacteria. So in this case, for example, you can see that um, the, um, bacteria, the 
uh, the protein families are attributed to different species. Another output we get from human is are the pathways and their abundance. So instead of only the protein families, there's also like a summary of the protein families which uh, are used together to create pathways. So specific pathways need a set of um, protein families, and if they are present, a human can calculate if this pathway is uh, present. And I mean that's a very nice function analysis because we want to know what pathways exist in our sample, and if we can um, associate that with specific phenotypes or specific um, uh, things that happen with our samples, then that gives us mo much more information of why specific um, uh, things happen in our sample or why, why specific attributes are correlated with our samples. So what we see here is that we have the, we get the path, the name of the pathway. Once again, this is stratified and unstratified for specific species and um, the overall sample and also the ones which are non-mapped and unintegrated. And once again, we get um, also the reads um, per uh, kilo base for this data. There's also another way to look at this. There's the pathway and their coverage, where um, our data is rather shown in the percentage-wise fashion from one to uh, zero for the pathways, if they are present. Once again, it should be mentioned here that this is transcriptomic data, not uh, metagenomic data. So we cannot 100% say um, whether our pathway or protein family abundance is due to a differential expression or um, different taxonomic abundance. Um, to do this, one would need to have um, data from metagenomic and metatranscriptomic data. In this case, we only have metatranscriptomic data. So for the sake of simplicity, we analyze this data. But um, to actually derive real abundances, one would need to have a look at the uh, metagenomic data as well. So the data we have here is reads per kilo base, which is already nice because it's kind of normalized on the uh, length of our um, uh, of our proteins. However, um, it's not normalized in terms of uh, sample sequence and depth. So if we compare samples with each other and they have different depths, then um, there could be uh, vast differences between the buttons. So we need to normalize our sequences for that as well. And we can use this using the renormalize in human generated table. There are different ways to normalize here, but the most simple one is the relative abundance. So comparing um, the gene families with each other um, and normalize on uh, the level by the uh, community total. And um, we can also include the unmapped, undecorated, ungrouped data here. And run this tool again to see a normalized um, a few of our um, gene families. And we can also run uh, this renormalization step on the um, pathways in the abundance. So you do exactly the same thing. You run the tool with the same parameters, but this time for pathways in abundance. And we can observe the normalized um, output of our data. And if you observe the output from this renormalization step, you can see that, uh, for example, for the pathways, instead of reads per million, uh, now we have a percentage um, of our um, relative abundance in percentage of our samples. And you can, for example, see that um, the adenine and adenosine salvage pathway has 0.0% uh, uh, abundance in our sample. After normalization of our um, gene families and pathways, we can also have a look on um, which gene families are involved in which pathways. At the moment, we only know the abundance of gene families and we know the abundance of gene pathways. But we can also combine that information to see the um, contribution of each gene family for each pathway. Therefore, we need to um, use the tool Unpack Pathway Abundances um, to show for each gene, uh, the gene for each F pathway. Um, we need to uh, select the renormalization on the data for the uh, gene family and the pathways. And then uh, when we run this tool, we get a combination of uh, both data uh, in the overview. Looking at this data, we can now see 
what is the contribution of each, gemily, each um, protein family uh, for the pathway of one specific uh, species. So that is a very complex overview of all the gene uh, families and our um, species, including our pathways, which gives you comprehensive information on the functional um, coverage of our sample. Although we know about our gene families, our pathways, and uh, given for specific species, um, gene families are, can be quite difficult to interpret, um, even with the known names, but even more with the IDs. To make our data more transparent and group gene families together um, into groups that are combinedly um, responsible for specific functions and roles in, in an organism, we can use a mapping to gene ontology terms. A gene ontology can be understood as a knowledge base for um, uh, genes and therefore describes which genes co uh, combined are responsible for specific tasks. And that makes our data analysis much more um, straightforward and transparent. So we can use the tool regroup human table on our gene families and their abundance and um, combine the group features using the sum where we put together um, gene families that belong to the same uh, gene ontology. Using this mapping uh, gene ontology to, to the, from the UNIREF, um, there are also other mappings available um, for further analysis, which uh, can be explored here. And if you run this tool, you will see an output. You will see an output if you click on the output of the regroup tool, uh, where you can now see the gene ontology terms instead of the gene families for specific strains. This doesn't tell you so much, so there needs to be some modification done here as well. Since the gene ontology IDs doesn't really help us much in interpreting our data, we can also further um, replace those IDs with uh, names of the features. Therefore, you need to use the rename feature of human rate table uh, tool uh, using uh, the regrouped data um, we generated before as input. You can use the advanced feature naming, and then you can uh, map the gene ontology IDs and uh, names to the corresponding names. And the output of this will be um, shown here, which now, where now are the gene ontology IDs replaced with additional information about their function. So for example, in this case, we know that um, this ontology ID is uh, use is uh, part of the um, phosphopyruvate hydro hydrotase complex, and this is already comprehensive information. And given, for example, that this um, uh, ontological term would be enriched in specific samples, one could could deduce um, interesting functional um, reasons behind this, which allows you to get a detailed understanding of the samples you investigate. We can also see that the ontological terms are further grouped into uh, different ontological overclasses. For M uh, MF, which is uh, molecular functions, BP, which are biological processes, and CC, cellular components. One might want to uh, split this big data set now up into um, different sub data sets where those um, uh, overall functions are grouped together. Therefore, we can use the um, tool, which is once again shown in also in our um, uh, tutorial, which is uh, in Galaxy, for example, to select lines that match an impression, where we can now select um, the lines that match the expression of the CC, MF, and BP tag on the ontology. So you can uh, use those tools and make sure that you run it similarly as described in the um, tutorial, matching a specific pattern using a regex from our renamed uh, file. And if you run this tool, you will see that in the output, which is already created in my um, pre-processed history, only the ontological terms which match uh, specific tags are shown. 
So a last very nice analysis we can do is to combine the taxonomic information with the function information. Because we know from human the relative abundance um, of a pathway attributed to a specific species. And we know from the metaflan output what is the abundance of the species. But we don't know the abundance of the pathway of the species because the output is not combined yet. But we can do this. There's a tool uh, to combine a human and metaflan output um, using combined metaflan and human outputs. Although when I created this tutorial or when I uploaded this tutorial, I realized there's a big problem um, using this tool at the moment. Because we updated human and metaflan used to use the newest databases and only later on realized that some of the taxonomic information in those databases is not synchronized yet. Um, the main problem here is, for example, that um, there is, um, we know from human that most gene families are associated to this species. But in our um, taxonomic um, table, we can only find this species. But when we observed this at Uniprod, we saw that actually the scientific name of Hunga Teiclostridium thermocellum is Activitum thermocellus. And I have excused myself that I'm not a very good Latin speaker. Um, so those um, species have to re be re renamed to match with each other using um, the human and the metaflan output. Um, fortunately, this can be done very easily using basic text processing features of Galaxy. So to make this tutorial work, uh, at the moment one needs to replace some text here of the um, normalized gene files. Um, in later uh, updates of this tutorial, I'm sure we will have uh, synchronized databases from human and metaflan, and then this is not necessary anymore. So for the sake of this tutorial, please use the replace tech parts of text tool and make sure that you use the same um, arguments that we use in the tutorial. So the little hack we need to do here is that we take our renormalized data from our human output and we replace the pattern which describes the, um, this species with the new updated species name which is now used in the uh, metaflan output. Um, so please just copy and paste um, those uh, uh, text parts and uh, replace this data and then um, we can for continue with the combined human and metaflan output. And when you have replaced this data, you should see now of the, in the human output that we actually see the um, new species Vibrio instead of the one which was uh, used before. And then when this is done, we can uh, combine human and metaflan output. And to co combine those two analyses, we need to take the output from metaflan, where we can use um, the cut data, um, and we can use the output from human, which is the one we just created with the replace command. And then we can type the characterization of gene families and run this tool as well. And if you uh, run this analysis and observe the output, you will see now that you will see for each of the genus and each of the species an abundance um, for the given uh, protein families and then also the um, gene family abundance. So a comprehensive table including the taxonomic abundance as well as the um, gene abundance, which gives you a great overview of the functional and taxonomic information of your sample. And you could even further analyze this data by using group data by column, where you group um, using the genus or the um, strain uh, uh, species information to get uh, a better idea about um, how many fam uh, if there are gene families associated with the genus and how many gene families associated with the um, species. So therefore you can click on group data by column and then uh, follow the tutorial as well. I think it's a great time to stop the tutorial now since we have a, had a combined output of taxonomic and functional information. So to recap a little bit, we went through the tutorial uh, using metatranscriptomic data 
use preprocessing to remove um, bad sequences and also remove rRNA um, sequences from our data. And then we analyze the data using taxonomic tools, um, specifically Metaflan2 and uh, Human. I'm saying Metaflan2, this is already wrong. Uh, by now, they don't really use those numbers anymore. So the newest versions on Galaxy are always Metaflan and Human. I think we buy Human Metaflan4 now and Human3. Um, we also saw that there are different ways to further um, pre-process Metaflan and human outputs to get relative abundance, to do normalization, um, to map the data to gene ontology terms, to powerful abundance gene families, and also transform the taxonomic quantification to taxonomic abundance, and further visualize taxonomic information using Krona and Craftland. And we also see, saw how this data can be combined to get a taxonomic quantification as well as a functional quantification, which gives you a great um, information about um, your data set. In further tutorials where we will work on, we will also see how this information can be used to, for example, do comparative um, metagenomics where we compare samples with each other, where it would be, for example, very beneficial to see um, how pathways and gene families differ between samples based on different conditions. Another thing that could be done from here is to use the pre-processed and sorted um, or filtered reads to do um, um, assembly, create context, and also use those contexts for further functional and other analyses. But um, this is part of a different tutorial, which we might um, add as well in the future. Um, from my side, I would say thank you very much for going to this tutorial. Please feel free um, to ask in the given um, chat sources about any information which might be missing or you want to have uh, more clear. Thank you very much for listening to this tutorial. Uh, I hope most of it worked out quite nicely um, and you have a better understanding now how you get a, get a taxonomic and functional analysis of metagenomic samples. Thank you very much and enjoy um, the tra other trainings as well. <laughs>